Hello, everyone. It's me again from earlier. So this is a nice and quick one. But uh, my name is Tim Fu, and I'm just going to talk to you guys about uh, how AI is changing the industry of architecture. So to start, um, before I got into the AI stuff, we used a lot of computation uh, inside our uh, work fields, including uh, algorithmic design and advanced computation, uh, using various types of machine uh, processes in order to generate complex architectural geometries. Many of them are generative. Many of them start with using uh, mathematical algorithms and scripts. So in a way, we're using machines to start the architectural process. And after that, uh, I got on to become a project lead at the Dubai Creek Harbor footbridge, in which uh, a lot of computation is also involved in the construction of complex structures, as well as the uh, construction and calculation of uh, structural optimization. So many of these processes obviously require heavily uh, the process of designing with computers to calculate the complexities that is structures. <clears throat> And finally, um, more recently, I gone and joined the uh, Saha Hadid Architects, a firm that is uh, leading advancing in the technology of um, uh, basically a parametric design, algorithm design, and everything you would name it that is in the industry of design and computation. And so from there, I learned a lot design ethos. I learned a lot about uh, the use of advanced geometries and computation and how to actually build these things. So I'm not really sure which screen you guys are looking at. <laughs> Is there a, just to make sure I know I'm talking on the right screen. OK, sorry, I think I'm one screen behind. Now I get it. OK, so Zaha Hadid is what you guys are looking at right now. This is the type of work that I've been doing there. And uh, after that, I started to um, get into AI. So during the, um, the summer of last year, uh, all these AI stuff started popping out in our social media. I started seeing images being tagged with Zaha Hadid. So I was interested because it was designed by AI, but at the same time, it also looked quite different from what I recognize in my office to be uh, in terms of design. So from there, um, I started to explore it on my own and see what I can do with it, going from very conceptual designs to then a little more detailed and trying to control and finesse the geometry in a way that it can be potentially utilized for uh, conversations about construction and feasibility. So I always try to use the tech in a way that can be done uh, in order to design things that are real, that can be constructed. And as the technology of AI improved, so did my, uh, I would say, skill sets of using the AI improved. Because as soon as you start getting into how to use the AI and how to control it to get it to what you want, there's also a whole plethora of things that you need to learn as an architect, designer, and a technician of using AI. So when you perfect these processes, which might take a while for uh, someone that has a specific goal in mind, you are allowed to drive the AI towards a certain design aesthetic and concept that you're looking for. So I think this is where the human intention comes in, whether you're doing exteriors and interiors, um, skyscrapers or bridges. There's a lot of ways in which you can start to incorporate your own um, ideas of design and your own styles. And so I experimented a lot with the different styles and variations from the past to the future, traditional to futurist. And I think it's very interesting to be able to have such freedom. But at the same time, I wanted to figure out how that we can further incorporate our human input into the design process. And that's when I started to experiment with sketching by hand, incorporating that into the AI. So you're using your sketch, and then you are uh, describing what you want the sketch to become. And finally, through a process of iteratively changing your design visually with Diffusion AI, you're able to get a final of what you're expecting from the initial sketch. So it became like a different way of thinking about design and a different process of design. And um, that same goes with uh, geometries, such as uh, uh, something that you can input very simply, and then you input a specific architect to give you something that is much more refined and detailed in a matter of mere seconds. 
So I found that to be a really interesting uh, way of thinking about design, how to develop designs through these uh, very basic forms and allowing that to, allowing the AI to really inform you on how to further develop certain ways of design. And so designs can come from a huge myriad of things now. We can take a piece of crumbled paper. You can insert the architect that you're looking for and then produce the result right away, which pretty much has a core uh, stylistic representation of the original. So that's a very powerful way for you to get some initial ideas, crunch it up into some sort of form, even through paper, and give you something a little more refined. So with the same AI process, uh, I started exploring different geometries in nature, perhaps getting influences and inspirations from that. And so all these forms you can see with just a very simple AI process by describing the prompts of what you wanted to result, you can potentially create um, you know, AI-generated architectural ideas that are based off of uh, real-life natural uh, morphologies. So finally, there's a lot of ways in which AI can conduct creativity that's different from us. For example, it's able to seamlessly merge two distinct concepts, such as, for example, a uh, villa and a guitar. It's something that's so distinctly different in its use and its uh, scale. And yet, by just prompting it out, you're able to con construct new concepts and idea extremely relatively quickly. And this idea allows you to explore, explore combinations. So I have a, a lot of um, joy when I see classical architecture. So now you can reinvent classical architecture, for example, Renaissance, with what you would deem as more of a something of the future. And same thing with, for example, Gothic. You can design some ideals that you liked from the classical era and then bring it forward. And so the next step for me was to figure out how to actually construct these things through AI. And one way was to break it down component by component, starting with the column capital, which is an expressive form. I designed some forms with AI uh, and then interpreted it in three dimensions, modeled it, and produced diagrams. And then these diagrams were sent to a stonemason in Germany by the name of Till Atfill, who had a collaboration with me to actually uh, physically uh, cut the stone out physically and actually sculpt it. So for the first time ever, in some sense, uh, and completely AI-generated form is now constructed by a human and exists in real life. And this is kind of like the potential first building block of many things to come. And this one is currently being exhibited still at the, during the Venice Biennale and another exhibit right now. So um, at a certain point, I decided to leave Zaha Hadid, uh, the office that I worked at uh, for longest time in London, in order to start my own firm, Studio Tim Fu, in order to pursue the um, necessity for us to, I think, orient an office towards the use of AI. I think there's a lot of ways we need to reorganize the structure of how we think and design and fabricate to suit this new technology. So that's why I felt it was important for me to leave the traditional balance of what an office was and try to formulate a new plan. And right now we have collaborations for various product and architecture, but namely the things that will definitely come out is not architecture, it will be products. So with this collaboration with Mavi Mat, a Italian furniture company, we are now, we've produced these aesthetic AI chairs that are now um, on sale, as well as some form of collaboration with a fashion company, namely here Sprayground, who I worked with in order to create this futuristic style concept. So AI has helped me also broaden the domain of my uh, sort of design repertoire, if you will. And that has become a very interesting part of uh, my studies. So AI can do a lot, replace a lot in the industry, going from the concept to the detailed design to the fabrication and construction to robotics and automation. I think there's a lot of ways the future will look different because of the way we can incorporate AI. And it will look a lot different because we will be designing with the help of AI. 
So the structure that we'll see in the future is going to become something that will echo the human essence of what we believe is powerful as a designer. But at the same time, it will be aided in production by the AI. So to conclude, I would say that AI is an incredibly human process if you really get to uh, the gist of it. Because as designers and architects, uh, we are in control. And the future has infinite potentials for us. And the AI is still a tool for us to design the future that we would like. Thank you very much for listening.